So in this lesson, we're going to look at key characteristics of polynomial functions, and we want to be able to describe them when we're given the function itself or its graph. And here's our standard that we're working on. So what's a polynomial function? A polynomial function can be described huh, in general like this. Looks like a bunch of gobbledygook. But let's just kind of go ahead and break it down. So every time you see in this description an A, that means it's a real number. Sub N just means it matches the term that X is to a corresponding exponent. So A sub N is called the leading coefficient. Okay, and the thing about the exponents has to be true is that they have to be real numbers, just like the coefficients have to be real numbers, and the exponents have to be zero or bigger. And they always have to, so in other words, they have to be the whole numbers. It'd be zero, one, two, three, no fractions, no decimals, no square roots, etc. Now we're going to go over some important vocabulary and just some general stuff about naming them and describing them. So if I see a function that looks like this, I don't see x at all, but there is a hidden x, and it has an exponent of 0 because x to the 0 is 1, and 4 times 1 is just 4. So the degree of this polynomial is 0, and it has a special name called the constant function. The leading coefficient would be 4 because 4 times x to the 0 gives us 4. Second one, I don't see an exponent on the x, but it is there, x to the first, because x to the first is the same as x. So the degree is 1, and it is called a linear function, and the leading coefficient is negative 5. And remember when you're looking at these and you're trying to tell what the degree is, you always have to make sure it's in standard form, which means that the highest degree is the first term. So this one here is our leading coefficient. It's next to x to the second power, which means it's degree 2. And you should know this name already, it's quadratic. Hey, okay, here's my highest degree. Leading coefficient, I don't see a number, but remember between the negative sign and the x is the hidden one. So my leading coefficient is negative one and it's third power, which is called a cubic function. Leading coefficient is negative three. Degree is four, it's called a quartic function. And last but not least, Leading coefficient is 9. Fifth degree is called a quintic function. Now, usually we don't really name names and after this. We just go ahead and we call it an nth degree polynomial. So, for example, we would say this one is a fifth degree polynomial. And if the highest exponent was 8, we would call it an eighth degree polynomial. Okay, and just to reiterate, when we're talking about degree, of a polynomial, it's just basically the biggest exponent in that polynomial function when it's in standard or simplified form. It means there's nothing else that could be added, subtracted, multiplied, divided. Can't combine like terms, can't multiply anything else. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at the parent functions. So our constant function, the most simple form of it is just y equals a number. And it always graphs as a horizontal line. Anytime we see a linear function, the most simple form is f of x equals x. That's a line with a slope of 1. It has a y and x intercept, both at the origin, and it just looks like a perfect diagonal line. Quadratic function, hopefully you remember this one. The parent function of the quadratic, we've already gone over that before, x squared. Vertex is at 0, 0, and it has points at 1, 1, and negative 1, 1, and its graph is called a parabola. Sorry for the messy one. Next, we have the cubic function. Again, the parent function is what we're talking about here. When we go ahead and we add different values to our parent function, we get some transformations which make them look a little bit different. So if I went ahead and I put in these values of x, I get negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, and 8. So it looks like this. So if we have a quartic function, degree is 4, and I go ahead and I put in a negative 2, I get positive 16. When I put in a negative 1, I get positive 1, 0, 1, positive 16. So it looks a lot like a parabola, the parent function of it. But again, when we add transformations by putting leading coefficients, we put other terms in there, um, changing our y-intercept, that's going to change things. But what it basically kind of looks like at its most basic parent form is it looks kind of like a parabola 
but it's going to be a little bit flat at the bottom. But it still only has one x-intercept. Okay, the quintic function is fifth degree. And again, whoops, when I go ahead and put some numbers in, I'm going to get 32, oops, sorry, negative 32, negative 1, 0, 1, and 32. And so it looks a lot like the cubic function, but the one difference being that it's going to be a lot more, but it's going to be a lot more narrow, it seems. Okay, and again, it's kind of flat right here when we actually go ahead and look at the graph in detail, but it only crosses the x-axis at zero. Now we're going to talk about something called end behavior. End behavior just means how can we describe on the left side as x approaches negative infinity and the right side as x approaches positive infinity, how can we describe the behavior of the range? So let's go over a little bit about notation here. So when we read this, it says, as x is approaching positive infinity. So what it means is when we're looking at the graph, this side over here is where x is going towards positive infinity. So this just literally means the right side. As x approaches negative infinity, that's going to be over here. So it's talking about the number line that's our x-axis. So this is going to be our left side. So right side behavior, left side, right, left, right, left. Okay, so here I've entered the function. Well, let's go ahead and look at the graph. So what we can see from the graph is that on this side over here, that right side, as x is going towards positive infinity, the y value just keeps going up and up and up. And over here on the left side, right there, it's going up and up and up also. So how we describe that is y going up means it's going towards positive infinity. And it's going up on the left and up on the right. Now let's go ahead and look at the second one, negative x squared plus x. So now when I go ahead and I look at the right side, Remember, that's as x goes towards positive infinity, what's the graph doing? It's decreasing and it's never turning around again, so it's going towards negative infinity. As x goes towards negative infinity, or the left side, y value is going also towards negative infinity. And so we would write that as, as x goes towards negative, positive infinity, y is going towards negative infinity. As x goes towards negative infinity on the left side, y is going down. Let's go ahead now and look at some 2x cubed and negative x cubed. So what do we notice about x cubed? Well remember our x cubed when we were looking at the parent function the ends went in the opposite direction. So our right side right here is going towards positive infinity but on the left side it's going towards negative infinity. So right side it was going up, left side it was going down. And when we look at that last one, so now on the right side, it's going up. I'm sorry, it's going up on the left side, and on the right side, it's going down. So how do we write that? So remember, left side means x is approaching negative infinity. It was going up, so y was going towards positive infinity. On the right side, as x approaches positive infinity, f of x was going down or towards negative infinity. So notice one thing, it's true. This is an even function and this is an even function. This is an odd and odd. So when we talk about even degree and versus odd degrees, it's talking about the, high, the degree is highest exponent, is it an even number or is it an odd number? And now what do you notice about what it's doing? When the leading coefficient was positive versus negative, positive and even, both ends are going the same direction, up. Positive, I'm sorry, negative leading coefficient and even, both ends were going down. So the ends in even functions always go the same direction, so it looks like this. 
or if the leading coefficient is negative, it looks like this. So we have as x goes towards positive infinity, so is the y. And as x goes towards negative infinity, so the y goes towards positive infinity. So they both are going up. So remember when the leading coefficients are both negative, both ends are going to go down if the degree is even. So it's negative infinity and negative infinity for y on both sides. Odd degree functions were these. And remember on these, the ends were going in opposite ways. So basically, we'll look at this again. f of x is going to be going up on the right, down on the left if it's an odd degree and a positive leading coefficient. Now what do you notice about the right sides of when the leading coefficient is positive, both right sides are going to be going up. And the same hold true, holds true as far as the agreement of the right sides when the exponent is odd degree. So remember our okay, up on the right, down on the left when it's odd and positive. And so it's going to switch right side down, left side up when it's odd. So as x approaches positive infinity, f of x goes towards negative infinity and it goes the opposite direction on the left side. So when the leading coefficient is negative, the right side behavior, no matter what type of degree it has, is always going to be going down on the right side. But if it's an even degree, the opposite side is going to go the same direction. But if it's an odd degree, the opposite side is going to go in the opposite direction. Is that right? But if it's an odd degree, the opposite side is going to go in the opposite direction. Okay, some other key characteristics that we talk about with polynomials are things called turning points, which many times are list known as minimas and maximas. Those are just plurals for minimum and maximum. Okay, so they're called the points at which a polynomial switches directions. Technically, what it's saying is that we know that it's a turning point if the, any nearby point, so point to the left, point to the right, that's infinitely close to that point. Okay, if it's higher, has a higher y value than any point around it, it's called a relative maximum. It's like the top of a hill. If it's the lowest point in its area, in other words, it has a lower y value than any point to its left or to its right, it's called a relative minimum. And functions can have multiple minimums and multiple maximums. Okay, another thing to note is that they're called turning points because they separate when our function's increasing or decreasing. We read a line from left to right like a sentence. So when I'm looking at this curve, I see that its y values are going up until I get to here. That means that interval, it's increasing. Then when I get to there, I see that it's going to go down until I get to that minimum. And then it's going back up again. And then it's going back up again. So what we say here is that it is increasing on these intervals and it's decreasing on that interval. So at this point in your mathematical career, to find the maximums and the minimums, we really can't do anything other than use our calculator. But if you really want to know how to do it, you need calculus. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to enter this function into our calculator and we're going to look at how to figure this out. And we will go over this more in class when you have your own calculator. Okay, so looking at this function, I see that right here is a maxima and here is a minima. So I'm gonna go to menu and I'm going to analyze the graph. We've done this before. And let's go ahead and find the maximum first because it's on the left. So remember we do upper bound, lower bound. So this is exactly how we found 
our vertices before. So I click on the left side of it, I click on the right side of it, and then it tells me my maximum's at about 4.3. And then I go ahead and I repeat, analyze the graph, and I'm gonna go for the minimum, and I set my lower bound, my upper bound, and it's about negative 4.3. Lower bound, upper bound, positive 4.3. Okay, so my relative maximum was about 4.3, and my relative minimum is about 4.3. It's really the y values. Okay, increasing intervals, when I go back, it's talking about the values of x. So that means it's going to be going up from negative infinity for x until we hit about 0.7 or 7 tenths. And this is interval notation, so I have to use parentheses because it doesn't actually go up or down at the minimum or the maximum. And then what's it doing is it's decreasing from 0.7 to 3.29. And again, not actually doing either increasing or decreasing. At, and then it's increasing again when it gets to here. I read the wrong number. 3.29 to positive infinity. So it's decreasing from point, it's decreasing from 0.7 until it gets to about 3.29, I'll just put 3.3. Remember we don't include it, so that's why we have to use parentheses, it's not an ordered pair. And then, remember, it's increasing again from there. So that means we have another increasing interval starting at 3.3, and going on until positive infinity because it doesn't end. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at all of these things put together. So I have a function, it's negative x cubed plus 3x squared. So what do I know about it? Well, I see that the degree is odd and the leading coefficient is negative. So what did we learn about that? We learn if it's odd, the ends are going to be going in opposite directions, but if the leading coefficient is negative, remember it's going to be the opposite directions as one with a positive. So which means that the right side, instead of going up, is going to be going down, and the left side is going to be going up. So as x approaches positive infinity, y goes to negative infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, remember that's the left side, y is going to be going up towards positive infinity. The domain of the function for all polynomials is always going to be all real numbers, but the range is going to change depending on if it's even or odd. All odd functions, and so you might want to make a note to yourself, odd functions, because they go negative and go on, they have opposite directions on each end, are always going to be all real numbers. Even functions depend, and they are what they depend on because the ends are always going to be going in the same direction. It's looking at what's the least value. You're always going to get a minimum or some type of maximum. Okay, so our range for odd functions is always negative infinity to positive infinity. For even functions, it's always going to be everything above a maximum or a min, I'm sorry, a minimum, or everything below a maximum. Okay, um, in order to figure out relative maximums, relative minimums, increasing intervals, and decreasing intervals, we would use our calculator. And to save us a little bit of time, we are going to finish this in class. So make sure you have all this ready to go when you get to class.